Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. I'm Troy McCormick and today we're out catfish fishing and we're at Haley's Lake on the kind of the southeast corner of Indianapolis at a pay lake. Now a lot of people uh, have been to pay lakes and a lot of people haven't been uh, but because we've got the contest it's kind of unique as well. Joining us is Jim Donlin of Westside Bait and Tackle here in Indianapolis and Jim you're hosting today's event. Tell me a little bit about why we're out here and about the contest. You know, we just wanted to put something good good and fun together. There's no kind of competitions for channel cat fishing and uh, as you can see it's pretty competitive. And we, we've got we've got 40 slots out here, so we've got 40 fishermen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the lake. Tell me a little bit about uh, how uh, the, the selection of the, the fishing spots goes, uh, about how many poles. Just give me a little okay. bit some about the rules and about the prizes and awards okay. today. Well, um, what we did is we had all the names inside a jug and we drew their name out from one through 40 and placed them about 10 to 15 feet apart. And uh, two and a half hours is what this tournament's gonna go for. And some of the estimates have been that it's gonna take probably 75 fish to win this thing. Wow, that's just amazing. So uh, got some nice trophies here for the top three guys. We got medals down to top 10. Uh, nice little cash payouts from 288 down to about 100 bucks for the top five guys. And uh, nice little prize packs all the way down to 10. Calling out some door prizes about every half hour or so. We had a little food for them this morning too, so. What did it cost to enter today? Uh, Fifty dollars. That was your twenty-dollar admission to come out to Haley's Lake, and that's a uh, twenty dollars, no limit on the fish, catch all you want, and that's a twelve-hour permit. They can, after the tournament's over today, they can go ahead and stay the rest of the day and uh, continue their fishing. And there's been a lot of action. I'm Nearly probably two thousand fish went into the lake today. Two thousand pounds of fish or two thousand fish? Two thousand pounds of fish, which was probably equates to around two thousand. Most fish. of them are pound to pound yeah. and a half that I'm seeing out here. And today. not to mention that. Uh, a lot of these fish are a lot of fish are in this lake at all times anyway. Sure. sure. I, I saw some of the guys looked like they might have caught some bluegill. Yeah. Okay. So they're 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 doing more. Of course, they want to throw those back in real oh, quick. Yeah. yeah. And to get more catfish. This is a fast-paced uh, fishing tournament. Yeah. Well, now what they have to do is before they can uh, cast their pole back out in the water, we're requiring that they get their uh, fish back into the basket. Okay. So so th there's some rules. There's one pole at a time in, yep. in the in the water. You got to get the fish off the line in the basket before the next pole yeah. goes out. And they can have a second pole uh, there ready to go to use whenever they're ready, but just one pole in the water at a time. That way it keeps a guy from throwing a pole out and blocking a guy in from another area. Right. And these guys, they find their spots and there's fish after fish after fish. I tell you, these guys, they can put that bobber within inches of another bobber. And I know, because uh, they, like I say, they start finding a, a hole out there and that uh, uh, they're, they're getting cats out of and they're just all boom, 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 all yeah. trying to get into that same spot. Yeah. It's Great. been exciting so far. It's been a good day. It's going to be really interesting to see how this uh, plays out at the end here. Now, Westside Bait and Tackle, like I say, you've done carp tournaments yes, before. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your second year for catfish contest. Yes, uh, you think you'll do it again next year? Without a doubt. Uh, we dubbed this Indiana Channel Cat Championship for the fact that there's no other, you know, real tournaments for channel cats. Nothing so. else in Indiana going. Not that I know of. Man, Not, that's, nothing that's like that's this. amazing. Yeah, it's great. Well, let's get back out, check in with the guys, see how they're doing, and I think we're going to be coming up... Uh, in about an hour for the uh, for the weigh-in thing up, we're going to have everybody bring their baskets in here for the weigh-in, and this should be very interesting. Number two is James Hall. Now to get the day started, and it was an early start before sunrise, as you can see, they drew numbers for stakes, and your stake determined where your fishing position was on the lake. Now, obviously, some people thought there might be good spots and bad spots, but it's a random draw, so that it was fair all the way around. But everybody was anxious to see where their stake was going to be. There's actually no spots right through here. Good. Hey, uh, kind of open it up a little bit. We could add a few more people, but I wanted to keep it smaller. Right past that little slope. Peg number nine. Dave Wimberly. You two are together. Dave, you're in the same little area he is. Now, once everybody got situated and the sun started to come up, it was actually a beautiful day. I mean, the fog was coming up off of the water and 
Uh, people are all around the lake uh, fishing off their stakes. Uh, here's Blake, uh, one of our uh, junior pro staff members, and he got a really good position because he was right down at the water, uh, was down kind of on the, the back side of the lake, and it was right where a lot of the action uh, was really going on. So Blake was starting out pretty good here early in the day. Now, not so much for Hack. You getting that lap flip? Yep. Hack was up on a uh, part of the lake that had about a six, seven foot high uh, embankment, which made it kind of interesting for him to be able to get his fish up out of the water. So Hack developed a uh, unique technique that uh, he dubbed the, the Hack Flip. And uh, he was able to literally flip the fish up out of the water to where he was able to reach him. There wasn't anything going to slow him down because the fish were biting, uh, people are, are yelling and having a good time, and uh, there's uh, nothing like catching a mess of fish. And Hack was right there in, in there with them, and he was going for that prize money. First time I've ever been to one of these. Well, Hack, that stringer's looking uh, like you're off to a pretty good start. We're going to see how you do uh, in the rest of the morning contest here. Hi, Jim Donlin here from Westside Bait and Tackle in downtown Indianapolis. We are one of the oldest and best stocked bait shops in Indiana. Since 1951, we've offered a large selection of live baits, including minnows, nightcrawlers, bee moth, and more, all at a low, low price. We have a complete selection of name brand rods, reels, lures, and tackle. We also have a full-service rod and reel repair center, so stop on in and see us soon. For more information, go to www.westsidebaitshop.com. After serving our country, serious injury shouldn't prevent our veterans from enjoying life. Paralyzed Veterans of America works with veterans to ensure that their health care and benefit needs are met, provides assistance with career needs, and offers challenging and rewarding activities. The Kentucky and Indiana chapter of PVA is also proud to provide adaptive sports and activities for its members. Paralyzed Veterans of America depends on the public's generosity to support its programs. Make your donation today and help give back to our nation's paralyzed heroes. The Old Goat Trading Post in Bloomingdale, Indiana offers not only traditional fur hides, hats, and mountain man-like apparel, but beautifully crafted spirit hides. Artistically sculpted from elk, moose, deer, and buffalo hides, they are the perfect wall hanging for your home or vacation cabin. The shaved hair sculpture and original painted scenes combine to create a natural canvas and work of art. Visit www.oldgoattrading.com for more information. Life Essentials in Brookston, Indiana provides the products you need to become more independent. Products like our journeyman wheelchair provide all-terrain access for the hunter and all-around outdoorsman. Every year, thousands of people are born with or acquire disabilities. Whether your special needs are for residential, commercial, agricultural, or just enjoying the outdoors once again, we customize our lifts and mobility products to fit your needs. We're raising you to new heights. Call today, and we'll work with you to take back your life. We're out here at Haley's Lake, and this is Jack Haley. Jack, tell me a little bit about uh, your fishing lakes and what you do out here and how people can come out uh, and enjoy fishing. Well, we've been here for 35 years, and basically we uh, stock fish, put them in, and uh, people actually come out and catch fish, and they catch sometimes quite a few fish. Yeah. Well, what are you stocking out here? Mostly channel catfish. Okay. Uh, they're the ones that you, edible size are in the same quality that you buy in any top brand like the Kroger's or, or whatever. Uh, they're really good fish. Kind of that one and a half to two and a half pound size. Yeah, which is the best eating size. Yeah, I would imagine so. Now, if somebody wants to come out for a day, uh, you're stocking throughout the week and on the yeah. weekends. How much does it cost and what do they get? To Normally we stock on Wednesdays, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's uh, $20 no limit on them days and days that we don't put fish in, it's $15 no limit. No, it's, it's, a, it's a terrific value of today's high price of fish. So if I wanted to come out with the family, it's 20 bucks a piece, and we right. get to keep everything we catch. On uh, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturday, and Sundays, now the other days it's 15. That's great. Well, I kind of like the idea of coming out on the stock days, because obviously there's probably going to be more fish. Yes. So what kind of crowds do you have? Does it get real crowded? Uh, at times. Uh, at times on the weekends, there's... 75, uh, sometimes up to 100 people. Okay. 
uh, but they catch a lot of fish. That's why there's. That's why they're here. That's why they're here. That's exactly right. Now, if someone's looking for you, how are they going to find you? Uh, it's real easy to find. It's 1111 Brookfield Road, which is just two to three miles east of 465 on Brookfield Road, which is English in Indianapolis, and it turns into Brookfield. Great. So it's kind of like the southeast corner of Indianapolis. So easy to find. You bet. I didn't have any trouble. It wasn't that far from the interstate. Actually, we're south of Washington Square on German Church Road. There you go. Right here in the central part of Indiana, you can come fish from anywhere uh, and have a really good day at fishing. Jack, we really appreciate you uh, hosting and uh, having us coming out here today. And uh, I think we're going to go check back in with some of the fishermen and see how they're catching. That'd be great. Come on in here, boys. Hurry. Hurry. <laughs> Get the boys in here. Hurry. Come on in. This is a few of the future Haley's. There you go. Well, great. Are you guys all fish? All the time. All the time, I'll bet. Now, I saw you two going around selling bait, too. Yeah. Turning them into entrepreneurs already. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Great. Well, let's but go. I'll tell you what, this is a safe, clean place. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, there's no place like it, as you'll see at uh, the pictures on this. Uh, yeah. How many lakes do you have? There's three. Three lakes? And they're stocked good. Great. Tell me how the fishing's been this morning. Oh, the fish has been pretty good. I ain't did bad. Yeah? You got a few of them in the basket? Oh, yeah, I got almost a half a basket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pretty good day. Man. Oh, yeah, it's so been far. pretty good. Have you ever been out here fishing before? All the time. He's it's my regular. favorite lake. He's a regular guy. I'm a regular. So you in contention for some of that prize money, you yes, think? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going for first place. There you go. <laughs> I won't settle for nothing else. <laughs> I will. Let me get the money. <laughs> Give me the trophy, give me the money. I was going to say, there's trophies and then there's the cash, that's right? That's right, that's right. There you go, there you go, come on. I missed him again. Because of the uh, luck of the draw today, how did you do, though, for position on the lake? Oh, you... I did pretty good. I got, I think I'm number, what am I, 10? I did pretty good. 10 and 11. 10 and 11. We, we got yeah. some good spots. Yeah, we got, now, we got you're good. having to look into the sun right now, though. Oh, yeah, the sun's kind of doing us in, but we got it. Yeah, we, sun ain't going to stop me from getting them fish out this water. Yeah, the fish is still biting, man. This oh, yeah. It's still a really good day out here. Oh, yeah. Crowd. And we're really going. It's kind of nice they limited it to just 40 guys so there wasn't 100 oh, yeah. guys short. Oh, that was a good number. Yeah, that's a real good number. That was a really good number right there. They got that going. That's a really good number, man. It's a really good crowd out here. Oh, yeah. Uh, everybody's catching fish, man. So that's, it's, it's been a really good morning. Blake, tell me a little bit about your fishing today. Uh, started out good in the morning and now it's starting to get a little bit slower, but still on them. Have you caught a few? Yeah, I've caught about 15. So is this your uh, first catfish contest? Yeah, I've uh, never fished catfish contest. What do you usually do? Bass fish tournaments. I might try this again sometime. Okay, now it's not a fishing contest until the fish come in to be weighed. And that's always the, uh, the highlight of the day, most obviously, is when everybody brings their fish in. But I'm telling you, these guys have a ton of fish. Now, they had predicted it might take up to 75 of these channel cats to win this competition. There's guys out here with 40, 50, 60 fish. I, I think they're going to be able to uh, reach that goal. Uh, we'll see what kind of uh, weights they've got, but I'm telling you, those, they, there's a mess of fish out there. Let's come up by you a little bit more. I'm rolling. No, that's okay. All right. What's your name on this one? Huh? Jeff Moss. Jeff Moss? Twenty-six thirteen, Jeff Moss. Twenty-six thirteen. Okay, it's time to weigh in for uh, Blake and Hack. Uh, let's find out how uh, these guys have done. Blake Alberson, 10-11. Now, Blake is uh, Hack's nephew and has joined us today on uh, one of our Indian Outdoor Adventure outings. Uh, Blake is usually out uh, fishing the uh, youth bass tournaments uh, and circuit here in Indiana, so it's been kind of fun to have him along and uh, joining in on uh, our catfish uh, contest here. Yeah, like 
Um, Hack, I'm afraid you're going to be just a little bit shy of that first place trophy. But uh, it, it was still a pretty darn good day. 18. 8.10. I just can't get over the, the quantities of the fish that these guys caught. I'm, you know, look at these. Everybody out there caught 15, 20, 30, 40 fish. Now that, that's a heck of a day fishing. 12, 43, 12. Uh-uh, no, I didn't. 45 is the lead. He's in third zone, I see it right now. 45 is the lead. Chapman's 45, that's the leader right now. Third place is Rick Jenkins. Come on up. With how much? Go, go. Rick Jenkins with 43 pounds, 12 ounces. For a third place. If you hurry up, I might still make it right. Yeah, I see your boy there. All right, second place. Norris. Jenkins, also referred to as Skeet. Skeeter. Come on, that's Skeeter. How much? I gotta give my trophy up, man. Right. Hang on just a second. second How many pounds? Little, little Jenkins boys. How many pounds, Jim? Hey, right here, Skeeter. second place. All right, Skeeter. Norris Jenkins with 43 pounds, 14 ounces. All right, you guys Skeeter. Skeeter. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, first place is. Oh. You get that trophy, man. What's going on? Hang on, Dave. If everybody will stay here for a second. Come on up, Skeet. No! Okay. First place today is Ray Chapman, 45 pounds. Congratulations, Ray. He's on him all day. Got him the point right from the get go. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. I need that. Our 2011 champion. And if we can have uh, Vernell Walker. Is he around here? Yeah, he's over there still a fish. All right, Vernell Walker is our last year champion. Here's this year's champion. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800-798-0769. Looking for adventure? Marengo Cave has it all. Explore the underground wonders of Marengo Cave with our two easy walking tours or go on an adventurous cave exploring trip with hard hats and lots of mud. Kids will love discovering gemstones at the Cave Springs Mining Flume. This U.S. National Natural Landmark has been open to the public since 1883 and provides breathtaking views of underground cave formations. Visit us online at MaringoCave.com and plan your visit today. Follow Indiana Outdoor Adventures online with Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Stay up to date with our exciting adventures as we're out in the field filming and meeting new people. From news updates and announcements to Twitter posts by co-host Troy McCormick. Why wait until the next season of shows when you can follow us as we're filming them? Join us online to get the most current news on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Cave Country Canoes, located in the heart of Indiana's cave country, offers a variety of canoe rental trips from half-day outings for beginners to two-day adventures for the more experienced enthusiast. Our canoe trips follow the gently meandering Blue River through the wooded hills of southern Indiana. Abundant wildlife and great fishing opportunities abound. Go to CaveCountryCanoes.com for more information about our canoe and kayak trips. Your next adventure is just a paddle away. I'm Troy McCormick and today joining me is Jeff Piper. And Jeff, we're here to learn a little bit about your trout farming operation. Now we're in southern Indiana, not too far from the Ohio River and people don't normally think about farming as the way it relates to fish, but you've turned an old gravel quarry uh, into both a combination pay pond and a trout farming operation. Tell me a little bit about how you farm trout and a little bit about your operation. Well, we're just blessed uh, to have some of the cleanest water that we could deal with, which is vital for the trout. 
Uh, of course, trout need, uh, besides the clean water, it needs to be moving. So here we're lucky that uh, this is a man-made uh, old limestone quarry, but Mother Nature's kind of stepped back in and, and helped develop what we have today with the with flow and, and with the clean water. Uh, also, you, you do need natural food source that can flow through the cages for them. Um, most of the trout that we have here, uh, well, all of these trout this time around came from Arkansas as fingerlings. Uh, we put them in the cages. And uh, yeah, I think the biggest one we had was maybe four to six inches. Okay. And, uh, and we'd put those in, we split them into cages, uh, about 200 fish per cage to start with. Of course, as they get bigger, the space uh, reduced, then we have to keep kind of sorting them out. But we now have some of these fish, uh, we put them in in mid-October, and we already have them uh, fed up to pound and a half, maybe two pounds on some of these. And this is just March. Yes. So and, uh, November, December, January, February, just in five months, we've gone from four to six inches to a pound and a half. I saw some in there, might have gone two, two and a half pounds. Oh, today. yeah, we're really proud of those. Uh, the more aggressive fish, they just take over. Um, they'll, t they'll eat all they want. Uh, we try to keep them fed a couple times a day at least. Uh, when we're here and, and we're open as a pay lake, we're constantly feeding the fish, we're constantly caring for the fish. Um, a lot of these, uh, one of the reasons of the motivation for, for it, increasing the production of the aquaculture operation is to help offset some hunger. We plan on giving 100 pounds of these to a local food pantry this year, and this is our largest crop. Uh, I think last year I only did 600. So, uh, next. So, so, how many trout do you have now? Approximately 1,100 in cages. Okay. Yeah. And, and tell me about the cages, because these are, if you just look at the surface, they look like they're only a few feet deep, but they're not. No, not at all. Uh, these are about four feet in diameter, and we make them in four foot sections, so we're going four, eight, 12, 16 feet. Uh, the deepest cages I have in the water right now are pushing the 12 foot mark, but uh, the majority of the cages that we're using this year are at eight feet. Uh, and the trout at eight feet right now, the water temperature is about 48 degrees, so they're doing really well. So we, we had some frost uh, on the ground this morning, but it's still 48 degrees in the water down where they are. And as the air temperature starts to warm up, it still stays cool enough because trout like rainbow trout like cooler water. Absolutely. Right? Okay. And as we go further out into the lake, we can go deeper with the cages. Yes. And then how do you decide how many to put into the cages? You know, we just did it this year by what we had available, but uh, it's still a little trial and error. I do have a mentor uh, in the past owner who this was basically started at his vision. And uh, Mr. Alexander had it down to where we could uh, pretty much use his numbers and then experiment with them a little bit. Um, so I have increased how many I can keep in each cage partially by uh, artificial aeration as well. Uh, if you crowd them too tight, then your oxygen levels dump down and your fish aren't gonna uh, grow quite as healthy and as rapid. So we, uh, we aerate right after feeding. We typically uh, have a built-in system and pump that air through to them. So Jeff, the, the idea is that we're starting out with these fingerlings, we're gonna get to about a pound in size, and then you sell to restaurants? Yeah, uh, we've already started marketing to a couple different restaurants. Okay. I said one of my first, my first promises I made uh, that if things would work out here, I, I made a promise to give 100 pounds to a food pantry and, and help offset some hunger. Um, in this lake, if we were to continue across this lake, we could feed an uh, awful lot of, of hungry young people. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of fish in this lake. There's a lot yeah. of fish. And, and if we could control them more, uh, more of them to the cages, once this harvest comes out, which uh, if the water reaches 64 degrees, these trout either have to be harvested or released into the lake so they can find their own deep spot, okay. their cold spot, or they will die. Uh, 64 degree water and rainbow trout don't mix. You can catch one of these trout uh, in the middle of the summer, for instance, and if you bring it from 52 degree water out here and you reel him in fast and up to a 90 degree bank, he's dead. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna die because they're they very sensitive to that temperature. Sure, very much so. They're very fragile fish. Now, in, in terms of raising trout, we have the supplemental food source. Yes. Tell me a little bit about uh, the food that we were dumping in and. Uh, they're obviously attracted to it, but it's meant to put pounds on them. Yeah, it's 46% protein, and uh, um, I have to say that there's only one food food uh, a feed store. Uh, it's up by Arland, Indiana, and uh, they supply this feed to a lot of the trout farmers. Okay. Uh, you, uh, it is a Purina product, and it's just called Aquamax 500, and uh, it's a small pellet, and that's what the, the, the rainbow prefer that. 
that kind of discourages some of the larger game fish from going for the expensive food. Uh, the, the bass want something big, so we give them a, a larger food if we're supplementally feeding those. And we do supplementally feed everything in this, in this body of water. Now, you talked about the cost on that food that you're feeding to the trout, too. Sure. It's got a price tag on it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's about you know, 90 cents a pound, pushing a dollar a pound or so. Uh, part of that, you, know, you, you, can, you can kind of measure your waste because the, the rainbow, as you saw earlier when we were feeding, they, they hit so hard that they will knock the food completely out of the cage. So some of that high dollar uh, protein goes back out into the lake. But everybody's enjoying it. That's why the crappie, it. the bluegill, and the bass are doing so well. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't go to waste. Uh, with this type of population, they're going to eat all of it. Now, you mentioned that uh, other trout farmers are buying the same type of uh, food. How big is the trout farming in Indiana, do you think? Um, fairly small. We have uh, another gentleman over at Dale, Indiana, who actually uh, splits out his loads, and then he'll make small deliveries. A lot of people want to have a few trout just in their private pond. This time of year, they're getting ready now. They do the same thing I do, except they're, they're wild fish. And then they'll go out there, they'll have them a, a casting day, and typically they'll clean those out in one day. Uh, they don't put that many into their ponds because they know if they don't catch them, they're just throwing money away because they're gonna, they're gonna pass on when the warm weather hits. Well, when you're ready to harvest and sell to the restaurants, obviously you've got to look at uh, transportation uh, to your buyer. Uh, and you, you've got the capability to ice them down and drive to some fairly major markets. You've got, you've got the Evansville area, you've got the Louisville area, you've got Bloomington. Um, so these are truly fresh fish when they hit the restaurants. Oh, yeah. And that's important, obviously, for them. Sure. Uh, we never freeze anything. Uh, we'll, we'll bring from water to, uh, to the restaurant three to four hours. Uh, I can deliver in Indianapolis within four hours' time from harvest to, to the kitchen. Uh, and you can't buy rainbow trout any place like that, um, especially southern Indiana. When, when you tell people that you have rainbow trout in southern Indiana, they, they think maybe you have uh, some pets. Well, because we're, we're used to thinking rainbow trout are up in the mountains or up in the northern lakes where it is cold. Well, you've taken uh, an unnatural environment, really. You've got a man-made quarry, but it's being spring-fed with a nice cool water coming through the limestone, and you've created a cold water climate to raise these trout in, and it, it's conducive for them growing well. Oh, yes. Um, once again, it's just a perfect setting for it. When, when I first looked at it, I thought, you know, this is just such a remarkable place, and, and the whole operation is, the whole lake is, and, and it just has its way of taking care of itself. Um, if, uh, I believe that any type of fish that you would attempt to uh, farm under controlled conditions in this lake would survive. That's all we have for today, so join us again next time right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.